I'm Jay Gabler, arts entertainment reporter for the Duluth News Tribune. Yes, we're coming to you on a weekend with a very special edition of the Duluth News Tribune Minute. We're trying something different. We thought we'd give you something to listen to on the weekend. And so I'm going to talk about Facebook. My column this week, I write a weekly column called Front Row Seat. And this week, I wrote about Facebook and why it is harder to quit when you live in Duluth. Here's the column. One day, several summers ago, a friend asked what I was planning to do for my upcoming birthday. Oh, I responded, I'm having oysters and a keg. I I sent the invite a while ago. Was it on Facebook, she asked? Sorry, I don't really check that anymore. Shunning Facebook was increasingly common, I realized, among my friends in the Twin Cities. After that point, I stopped assuming that Facebook invites would reach the people I wanted to host, even if those people had Facebook accounts. As the platform saw waves of negative press, some of my friends started closing their Facebook accounts altogether. Meanwhile, family chats that used to happen in Facebook groups moved to new online spaces like Marco Polo. Email experienced a renaissance, and chat platforms like WhatsApp and Signal took off. To see and be seen, you'd go to Instagram or Snapchat. LinkedIn pushed its Facebook-like features for exchanging professional information. By November 2022, a New York Times op-ed written by Toronto lifestyle journalist Isabel Sloan exemplified the perception of Facebook among many urbanites. According to the headline of that piece, Facebook had become, quote, a freak show ghost town. For Sloan, Facebook had become a, quote, dinosaur platform best enjoyed as sheer camp. Quote, Facebook is an erratic poo-poo platter of things I never knew I wanted to see, she wrote. Every time I log in, I'm greeted with a Wunderkammer's worth of content that has virtually nothing to do with my day-to-day life. That essay particularly struck me, because by the time it was published, I was living and working in Duluth. For my own work as a lifestyle journalist here, Facebook isn't a ghost town. It's still the town square. If I want to know whether a show is canceled due to a snowstorm, I check Facebook. If I want to know a local business's holiday hours, I check Facebook. For many of the events I write about, Facebook is the most informative and sometimes even the only source of information. Local organizations' websites often share outright that all timely information goes on Facebook. I'm back to checking my notifications for private Facebook events, too. I don't want to miss any birthday parties, and here in Duluth, I might. I've had a long journey with Mark Zuckerberg's paradigmatic social network. I was a graduate student and resident tutor at Harvard when the Facebook, as it was originally called, launched there. The Connect You leaders, who considered Facebook an illegitimate ripoff, lived in my dorm complex. And yes, the Winklevoss twins were known as the Winklevi even back then. I heard the social network drama unfold as dining hall gossip. Ironically, if the friends I added my first couple of years on the platform were still my only Facebook friends, I'd see the site as the ghost town Sloan describes. Many of Zuckerberg's classmates have closed their accounts, or have hardly updated their profile since graduation. If I use Facebook to check in on someone I knew from campus, I'm unsurprised if I find only a smattering of unseen, unanswered greetings posted for the person's most recent birthday. Even as my friends and colleagues backed away from Facebook as a platform for personal information, it remained important to me professionally. In my last job, I wasn't just a writer, I was a digital producer with the responsibility for promoting my own stories online and helping to manage my company's Facebook pages. Still, over the last handful of years, Facebook became mostly a place to go to push my content, rarely to engage or learn. Why is Facebook so much more commonly used for essential information exchange in Duluth than in Minneapolis, New York, or apparently Toronto? There are a lot of dimensions to that question, and as a former sociologist, I wish there was more research addressing it. Of course, Facebook closely guards its usage data, and the social media landscape is changing so quickly that a lengthy study could be outdated before it was even published. Resources clearly are important. Larger organizations with larger audiences have the capacity and incentive to maintain updated websites where they can expect people to seek them out. Smaller organizations might not have time or money to hire a web person to keep a website regularly updated, but it's easy to share information on Facebook. If a Duluth brewery is pointing me to Facebook for entertainment updates, I don't assume it's because the brewery owners find that arrangement ideal. More likely, it's because the staffer promoting the events might also be booking the shows, running sound, shoveling snow, and taking shifts in the taproom. Facebook works. As long as Facebook is the easiest, most reliable option for letting people know you're having a show or selling a bed frame or just saying hi, it will maintain a critical mass of users in cities like Duluth. 
For both professional and personal reasons, I shy away from talking politics on social media. But moving to Duluth has given me a new perspective on how networks like Facebook have come to wield such influence in shaping our discourse on a range of topics. When any platform comes to feel absolutely essential to remaining connected to your community, that platform has power to control what you see. That's as true of a newspaper as a Facebook, but at a newspaper, you know who's curating the content. The editor's names are on the masthead. At Facebook, Instagram, or TikTok, the editor is an algorithm. While Facebook may be a bigger part of my life in Duluth than it was in Minneapolis, it's also true that much more direct forms of communication are gratifyingly common here. When I have a question about an event or organization, I'll often just pick up the phone and call. At other times, I'll engage in the original form of social networking and just go introduce myself in person. That works too. Those are my thoughts on using Facebook in Duluth. It is certainly essential here. I'm on it all the time, which is how I find out about what's going on. So look for more on what's happening in coming weeks, including a round of best bets for the following weekend that are going to include a homegrown fiasco, a special winter edition, a mini edition, it seems, of the Duluth Homegrown Music Festival. Also in this week's shortcuts, a sort of supplement to my weekly column, I'll be writing about artist Kelly Schomburger. She is a Duluth artist who I met when she had a show at the Great Lakes Aquarium last year. She has been granted a very special honor. Her artwork is going, literally, I kid you not, to the moon. Coming up this week in the Duluth News Tribune, I'm Jake Abler. Have a great weekend.